In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a several tiered underlayment under your tile roof. Underlayment is an extremely important part of a tile roof system. It actually keeps out a lot of the water as tile roofs tend to actually let water in. Tile both absorbs water and can get in through the cracks and crevices. So a good quality tile roof means the best of all underlayments on the market. What we like to use is a material by Polyglass. It's called Polystick MTS Plus. There are similar products on the market. We've tested a few and looked into the warranties. We believe that MTS Plus is a great system. You can do this by installing either one layer or two. It's up to you. The one layer of MTS Plus provides a 20 year warranty when two layers actually provide you 30 year warranty and double the protection. The nice thing about self tier underlayment is that it adheres to flashing and it also self seals around nails. So even if water gets in under your tiles, your roof is not going to leak. The general concept of any tile roof underlayment is you want to make sure that the underlayment itself is waterproof and done in such a way where even if water were to get on the underlayment without any tiles, you would have zero leaks. Let's get into it and let me show you how to properly install the MTS Plus. All right, the first thing we want to do prior to installing our underlayment is install our drip hedge at the eaves. Now, if you're installing two layers of MTS Plus, if you're installing two layers of self-adhered underlayment, what I like to do is first install the first layer prior to installing any flashings, then install the second layer with flashings. Now, in this case, we're just going to be installing one layer of the self-adhered underlayment, so we're going to install our drip hedge first. I'm not going to show you how to install a full piece. You can watch our other videos on how to do that. It's standard installation processes, nailing every 10 to 12 inches on center and calling it a day. I also like to use a wider drip edge, so a two by four is what I like. Two inch looks nice and slick on the front side. Four inches gives you a nice wide area so we can have ourselves adhered and then get a nice bond to it. So as always, we're gonna be installing this again 10 to 12 inches on center using three eighths inch diameter hot dip galvanized nails. Now prior to installing our underlayment, what we wanna do is actually prime our drip edge with an asphalt primer so we get good adhesion. You can do it without it really, but giving it a nice light coat of asphalt primer is gonna make sure you have great bondage and is really gonna protect your eaves. And on tile, it's extremely important because once we install our bird stop or our tile riser, that's gonna block water from coming all the way down the roof. So you wanna make sure that this gets a good bond. Now, prior to installing your entire field of underlayment, another thing we want to do is go through all our penetrations, whether that's a chimney, a skylight, or dormer, a roof-to-wall joint, and install one layer of the self-adhered underlayment on it, and we're going to cut it at a diagonal at an angle prior to installing our primary field. This is going to make sure that these corners are protected and they're overlapping properly. I think once we install it, it'll make a lot more sense. On this first layer, what we want to do is cut up at a 45-degree angle up towards the top slope of the roof. That's gonna allow us to bend this over. Then our second layer, then we come, we're gonna cut it at an angle going down to make sure that this corner is protected here. All right, now that we've got this cut and aligned, you wanna hold it in place and just remove your adhesive backing. Then slowly slide this in place. It's really easier done with two people to make sure that you get a nice tight seam and it's properly aligned. And these corners, you can fold them in. Then once you've got the top in place, it's super easy, just lift the bottom half, remove your film, and let it drop. You kind of want to smooth it out with your hands to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles. So we've got this in place, again, this could be a skylight, it can be a chimney, it can be a dormer, whatever it is. As long as it's a wall, that's what we want to do. Cut it at a corner coming up. Then our next piece, we're going to come and overlap it, and we're going to have a super tight seal right here. All right, once your asphalt primer is dry, you can install your first row of underlayment. The way we like to do it is throw it on there, align it. Do not remove any of the self-adhered lining right here. You first want to align it in place. And what we want to do is bring it about a quarter to half inch up from your drip hedge. You don't want it coming out because it's going to look ugly from the bottom. And with four inches, you've got plenty of room to grab onto. So do it a half inch, I would recommend, up from your drip hedge. 
align it. And what we like to do is just install one or two nails to help keep it aligned while we remove the film from behind it. Now that we've got our piece tacked, relatively aligned, and our corner installed already, what we want to do is make the cuts for this area. Now we call these our end laps. Anytime two ends of a roll are meeting, on our end laps we want to have a minimum of 10 to 12 inches overlap. More is always better. So right here we've got 24 inches. That's definitely okay, it's preferred. But just don't go any less than 10 to 12 inches. Now you can see what we've done here. The first layer we're cutting up at a 45 degree angle and the second layer we're cutting down at a 45 degree angle so that this corner is fully protected and there's no way water can get in here. What we're gonna do is just remove our adhesive backing. Now you can see what Marco's doing is keeping it in place and just tugging it underneath it. That way it stays aligned and all you're doing is just removing that film and you have a nice tight pond right there. So we've got our bottom pulled out already. At this point you can really just pop this nail off and get going on your top half. Remove it and you can always just roll it in place and do the same thing. Just pull the film out from underneath it. Now one last thing I want to show you on these details, on these corners. Anytime you have an overlap that is crucial and critical, we always recommend installing and priming it with an asphalt primer. That's just always going to help with adhesion, even though without it, this stuff is super tacky. You can see it's sticking on my fingers right here, look at that. But even with the fact that it's so tacky, installing an asphalt primer is just going to make it really grip. And especially on corners like this, I think it's super important. It's one quick step that will make this job nice and tight. Now again, you can do this on all your end laps, but I really recommend doing it on your vulnerable corners. Now once the asphalt primer is dry, you can just roll this on. Oh. Again, you want to be super careful to lay this down properly because it is extremely tacky. Now another thing you can do using a silicone roller or rubber roller is work these details in. This really helps, especially if it's on a colder day, to get a nice tight bond here. Generally on hotter days and warmer days you don't need this, but on days that are colder, definitely doesn't hurt. I want to show you how to install this side lap. So uh, an end lap is where two ends meet. Now this lap right here is going to be continuous along the length of this underlayment and you can see here what this underlayment has is a two three inch strip of black film. This is essentially what you're going to use as your line. You can go a little bit past this and this is really going to provide a great adhesion. No need to prime this. This is already made to just really bond real tight and real fast regardless of the weather. You just really want to make sure that you're holding your line because if it gets tacked and adhered in the wrong position it's going to be very difficult to later shift so once that's off we just kind of just lightly push it in place uh, i want to show you right here you can see in just a matter of like 10 seconds how difficult it is to pull off you can imagine once the sun heats this up a little bit more and gets really melted in and heated up it's not going to come apart regardless of what you do All right, now that we've got our base layer installed, what we actually want to do is install a piece of pipe flashing around these pipes. We want to do that around all our penetrations, and we'll show that in further videos, whether it's a T-top, a dormer vent, or any other type of penetration in our field. Essentially, the idea is that our underlayment needs to be 100% waterproof. So if we were not to install tile on our underlayment, we would still not have any leaks, regardless of how strong of a rain we had. So the way we want to do it is, first off, just install this pipe flashing. Now we want to nail it. We're going to be nailing it just like any other flashing using 3 8 inch galvanized nails. 
We don't want to put any nails on the bottom side here. Now, we're still not done with this process. What we want to do is actually install a piece of underlayment on top of this in order to make sure that there's no water that comes in on this top edge right here. You can see if water were to come and roll down here, it would get underneath here and cause a leak. So we want to install a piece right here before installing our top layer to make sure that this is 100% waterproof. So Marco's already cut this out for us. And the width of it is not as crucial. Now, before we actually install this, what we want to do is prime our metal. I'm not going to fully prime it, but you're pretty much using an asphalt primer, both on your flashing and on your underlayment. You can also do it on your wood deck. What this does is really provides a very solid bond between your self-adhered underlayment and your flashing. All right, now that the primer is dried, we're ready to install the second piece of flashing. We just want to align it on top and now start cutting out the opening. Uh, you can see how Marco cut it. He made it wider than the actual pipe flashing itself. There's two reasons for this. Number one is to allow water to properly flow and give a path for the water to come down. Second of all, once we install our tile, our tile's not gonna be butted up tight against this. It's gonna be set back a little bit so that once we have our tile, it's not gonna be visible from the exterior. So we have this cut already. We just have to remove our adhesive back end. With just a few seconds, I'm already having a hard time pulling this off. So again, once the sun heats this up, this is gonna be solid, definitely not gonna leak. And with this piece of underlayment installed, there's no way this pipe's gonna leak. Even if you don't have tiles installed, this is gonna be completely waterproof. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and do all that good stuff. Now, if you have things that you like to do differently, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comments below. We have a bunch of other videos for tile, flat tile roof installation tutorials. If we're missing something, let us know and we'd like to fill it out for you. Thanks for watching.